I didn't want to bore everybody with the repetitive nature of uh, building these frames because they're essentially the same as we go. But um, this one is going to be a little different and the, the ones towards the aft end of the boat are going to be a little different because they have the raised shear, which is this, I don't know, crook. It, you know, it looks like a, a normal dead rise here on the side, but then there's like a, a shoulder where it angles up and it's a straight line. And um, there's a different way of assembling these frames because we're actually going to have to trim off the side piece at an angle and then that cutoff will then be reattached on the inside and bolted on to give a squared off inside edge and to allow for some thickness there too for strength. So um, we'll go through this one and uh, we can see how it goes. There really isn't a ton of skill here. So I mean, I'm just marking this inside line. This will give me the point where uh, the bottom piece meets up. Then you put the bottom piece on the blocks, run it past that pencil line we just drew, <laughs> mark it with your pencil, flip it over, put a straight edge on those two marks, and then connect the line and cut it. There's really uh, nothing intimidating about here. You're not calculating any angles. All connect the dots. Same thing where it crosses the keel. Mark. This one gets a little tricky, so I gotta use my square. nothing to it. That's the same for all the frames on the bottom. No big deal. Now let's address this raised shear and how we're going to transfer that line. All right, I'm going to mark the inside edge of this straight edge here just so I can see where it's supposed to line up. Because when we put this side piece on, this line, but then we're going to have to cut the mark where it crosses here and up at the top. So that will cut out this triangle piece and then this triangle piece. I don't necessarily know if we'll be able to reuse this cutoff to put it on the inside to square off that inside edge or if we'll have to cut another one, but you know, we'll give it a shot. But so far, so good. This is a tough line to transfer, so I think I'm going to need to use a square which I left over there. Now I think this is going to be the one of the ones where we're going to leave that line when we cut it and then we'll finish up that edge because this is essentially a glue up like anything we would do in woodworking if you're making a cutting board that you're going to have to dress both edges so that you get a very clean line so that the glue up is strong. So we'll leave that line and then I don't know maybe angle it up on the joiner. I don't know, we'll figure it out later.
bandsaw uh, joiner worked well. Um, got a very nice edge. Uh, the only thing that I noticed that I know that we did now is that we cut off um, our bevel for that we ripped on our table saw. So it was only like two degrees, so I'll have to adjust that later, but this way goes. How's that for a mistake? Uh, obviously I cut this too short because I was looking at the line that I drew for station 18, not the line I drew for station 26. So I ended up looking at the wrong one, which goes to the fact of how many stations you have on this table. You're gonna confuse lines. Uh, I think it's just the nature of the beast. So I gotta go make up another one of these. Hmm, away we go. I ended up stacking uh, two sheets together. I had a, a little bit left from uh, the previous sheet and I just stacked them on, on top and I'm cutting two at a time. So I've doubled my productivity. And these are the things you're supposed to think of and tell me. But if you're doing something at home, this will be a real time saver. And now I discovered a couple more errors. Nothing bad, but you know I think this is worthy of us talking about. You know, if you're doing something similar, um, it was a cascading thing of errors, and I can see what happened. First of all, on the side piece on the uh, port side here, I um, made a mistake on layout before I cut anything. It was just layout, so I flipped the board over, not thinking at all about the angle, the bevel that we cut on the frame back in the shop and then redid my drawings. And I did that because I didn't want to confuse the lines. So that got turned around. So that in turn set the frame back just a little bit, which brought the bottom piece up this way a little bit, which made it about an eighth of an inch short here to the keel. It's okay because inside bevel, no problem. This is actually only like two degrees, I think. So it'll be quick work once it's up on the keel to um, bevel it by hand, no big deal. Um, being a little short here, no big deal here, because I'm actually making this, this keel drawn out a little wider than it actually is um, gonna be once it's assembled. And I did that because I wanted to have some room to uh, fit it. So this being cut a little short will actually probably be perfect and will not require any fitting, but I think, I don't know what, you know, maybe I'm rushing, am I tired, you know, it's, it's, we're at the end of the day, I've done a couple, been getting overconfident, I don't know. Um, but you've got to have your head in the game throughout this entire process with all these different lines, with all the angles that are going on. Um, I'm not upset about it, but, you know, I mean, I know I can do better, and that's what I'm going to try to do. So I think I'm going to call it a day for uh, now. We'll come back out and uh, try to finish this up and station 34 tomorrow, and then we'll call it a weekend. I'm going to have to wrap it up tomorrow kind of early, too, because I uh, have a chance for overtime at work, so I'm going to take that. Uh, so let's get back out here tomorrow and see how it goes.
Okay, we got started uh, this morning and we machined up some new stock. Um, and this time I marked the line with a purple marker. So I know I won't make a mistake with an old pencil line. So we made that correction. And uh, actually, uh, last night I was uh, watching uh, Tips from a Shipwright on uh, YouTube. Uh, it's a great channel. I'll put a link up there um, so you can check it out. Uh, and I got to thinking that I made a lot of excuses yesterday afternoon about, uh, you know, it's good enough, it'll be okay, but you know what? It's not okay. And like I said, I can do better. And all this is, is my time. I've said it's good enough on a lot of projects, and I'm not willing to do that on this one. It takes a little bit more time, so be it. You know, I ordered uh, stock, and shame on me for not ordering an overabundance thinking you know arrogantly that I would get everything right the first time so I may have to order some more stock to uh, complete the project but that's okay too so every time I say or if you catch me saying it's good enough leave a comment and let me know because I'm gonna try not to say it's good enough it's not gonna be good enough it's gonna be right and that's what we're gonna do so uh, what I did is I remachined the bottom piece on the starboard side here no problem I remachined the bottom side on the on the port side as well because you know we said that was short but that'd probably be okay. Well, we redid it while I was doing it anyway. And then the bevel on the port side side piece, I remachined that, squared off the inside edge on the on the joiner, and then cut the new bevel on the outside. So that's right, and that's the way it goes. I saved the pieces that uh, we took out. Um, I'm sure we'll be able to reuse them as some smaller pieces in other frames. So hopefully no harm, no foul, and we're doing it right. So now I just got to make my marks, cut my angles, and same thing we did yesterday, so no big deal. So what I've learned these um, stations in the aft section of the boat with the raised shear, you've really got to get that angle set at that raised shear before you scribe or mark any other lines for any of the other pieces because these are like compound angles and once you start cutting or planing up there, it moves the board, it changes the line, which changes the angles down here. So that's what we did is we got that all set and squared away and then we built off that. It worked really, really well. Um, for the rest of this, you know, this is going to be similar to what we've uh, done before, what you guys have seen before. I'm just going to screw these gussets in place temporarily. They will have uh, glue and bolts in the future. Uh, we do have a Facebook page. Um, if you log into Facebook and uh, search Sea Dreamer Project, you can find it. Uh, what I'm trying to do is post uh, the pictures and commentary of what we're doing in real time as it happens. So if you want to follow along, you know, kind of live, that's a good way to do it. Um, we've got a lot of new subscribers and uh, views in the last few days, and man, we really, really do appreciate it. It's been really great. Uh, and, and honestly, you know, knowing that I'm being watched, it kind of makes it so uh, good enough or close enough is not going to cut it. It's, you know, it's got to be right. So that type of thing makes for a better boat, which I'm grateful for. So we really do appreciate you being here. Thanks for watching. If you like what you see, you know, like, subscribe, and share. Uh, check us out on Facebook, and we will see you next time.